Welcome to the No Sugar Coating Podcast. I am Amber Romaniak, emotional eating, digestive, and hormone expert. I am also the founder of amberapproved.ca. I support professional women achieve optimal health through mindful eating, self-care, and overcoming self-sabotage with food. This podcast provides the honest truth on what you really need to create body freedom. The No Sugar Coating Podcast provides information on healthy living, lifestyle changes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. Always seek the advice of your healthcare practitioner regarding your health and nutrition program. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. This week, I am going to be talking about common signs of hormone imbalances, hormone imbalances in emotional eating, and the impacts of fad diets and exercise on hormone imbalances. I'm going to dive right into the show notes, uh, which you can find at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast forward slash 178. A friendly reminder to subscribe to the No Sugar Coating podcast on all podcast apps. It's, of course, the one with the photo of yours truly. You can click the link in the show notes to subscribe as well as you can listen to all episodes at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast. So it's spring. Happy spring, everybody. It's time to refresh and do some internal spring cleaning. Lighten up your mood your mind, your digestive system, understand your body's physical symptoms, things like bloating, fatigue, craving, slow energy, strengthen your self-care habits, or maybe for you it's about building a self-care routine. Perhaps you want to build a healthier relationship with food. If you are looking to do one of those or any of those things, then I am excited to share that I am in the mode of launching my spring group program. It is called Jump Into Your Body Freedom, and it is my wonderful eight-week group program that will be launching in May. So if you're wanting to learn more, if you're wanting to have a conversation, um, make sure you email me at info at amberproof.ca with the subject line group program. The first five spots are offered at 50% off um, and it's going to be an online program. So anyone anywhere in the world can access it. Um, so again, you can email me at info at amberproof.ca with the subject line group program. And I look very forward to connecting with you. And if you're wondering if you're struggling with emotional eating, you can take the emotional eating quiz as well as check out my emotional eating video series at amberapproved.ca. Both of the links for those are in the show notes. Last but not least, make sure you're following me on Instagram at amberromaniac as this is where I share a lot of health tips, emotional eating inspiration, recipes, Instagram stories, lives, and much more. So thank you to everyone who has left a review, a five-star rating, sent me an email, shared or um, reposted the podcast on your social media. I'm so grateful and thankful for all of your support and so grateful that so many of you listen all over the world and take something different away from this podcast. So if you would like to support the podcast and leave a review or a, a rating or both, you can do so on your phone or computer by going to podcasts and searching for the No Sugar Coating Podcast. Even if you're subscribed to me, you will need to find the show in this way. Once you're on my main page, you can click on reviews, write a review in purple, and you can give me five stars if you like, or write a little something or both. Uh, You can also go to amberapproved.ca forward slash review, and it will take you to the page where you can follow the steps that I've just shared. And if you do have questions, you can submit them to nosugarcoatingpodcast at gmail.com. I please ask that questions are no more than 150 words in length as health histories usually need more support in private coaching or the group program may be a better fit. And if you're finding a specific eating style isn't working for you, you're struggling with emotional eating, binging, food addiction, digestive issues, inflammation, perhaps you suspect your hormones are out of balance, your self-care continues to be a struggle, you're your last priority, you're fighting with your weight, you're just feeling really overwhelmed, you don't know what to do, you don't know what to try next because there's just so many things out there in the world. Well, you're definitely in the right place because I will continue to dive into these topics and dive into the habits and mindsets to set you on a different path. So the last few weeks, I've been talking about the common signs of digestive imbalances and how digestion and emotional eating can impact each other. So if you haven't listened, make sure you go back and listen to the last three episodes because there's some really great information there. Um, And if you've been listening along, wonderful. And if, if this is your first episode, well, then welcome. So digestion, as I've been mentioning, plays such a vital role in our health, our well-being, energy levels, mental clarity, cravings, skin, so much more. And digestive health also plays a huge role in the state of your hormone health. 
and vice versa. So when there are digestive imbalances, it can have an impact on your hormones, again, because these are stressors. And as an example, when I struggled with binge eating and would binge, it would put a lot of stress on my digestive system because of the mass amounts of different foods I was eating, and I was eating a lot of really processed foods. And then as as a result, because my digestion was under so much stress, I had more inflammation, my immune system was more suppressed, so I would catch colds and flus more easily. I was susceptible to having a lot more food sensitivities and it didn't matter what I ate. It just felt like I was always feeling sensitive and that threw my gut flora off and that impacted my energy levels and my mental clarity, my mood, so many different things because my body was just in such a heightened state of stress and that heightened state of stress had a huge impact on my hormones. Um, It impacted my thyroid. My thyroid went really underactive and as a side note, the thyroid does not thrive when there is consistent or you know um, persistent inflammation in the body, it, inflammation really suppresses the thyroid. Um, my cortisol level, which is your stress hormone, that was really elevated. Again, all the stress from the binging and, and stressing about binging and dieting and over-exercising and the inflammation was having a huge impact on my cortisol. So I wanted to share today some common signs that may indicate hormone imbalances. That being said, always check with your healthcare provider regarding your health and wellness program And this podcast is not a means to tell you that you have certain hormone imbalances. It is just to plant a seed for you or help give you some awareness. Amber Approved offers private coaching for hormonal imbalances, weight loss and digestive issues, emotional eating, and more. Contact Amber at amberapproved.ca to book your 30-minute complimentary consultation today. So the first point I have that I want to explore today is all about common signs of hormone imbalances. So I did want to highlight some of the ones that I see that I saw myself with, that I see my clients with, and that I just people in general that I talk to, there just seem to be some very common symptoms or signs of hormone imbalances. And so if you feel like you have a bunch of these, then it may be a great opportunity to reach out and book a body freedom call or to gain take further action to get support to regulate your symptoms. If you find that you're struggling with multiple symptoms and you've been told to just take a bunch of supplements or you've been told to just like do one thing and that's not working, again, there may be a great opportunity to actually take a different approach and try something different. So to me, at the end of the day, regardless of what is going on for you, the key is that you get the answers that you need for your body and that you get the support to see these symptoms improve. So the first most common sign that I see people struggling with when they have hormone imbalances is fatigue. People are tired. People are exhausted. People are not, you know, able to function properly through their day. They wake up tired. They go to bed exhausted. They're having afternoon energy lulls, lots of caffeine, lots of energy drinks, lots of sugar through the day to try to boost those energy levels, even though it only suppresses them even more. So fatigue is a very common sign of potentially having hormone imbalances. And across the board, like, cortisol imbalances, thyroid imbalances, estrogen and progesterone imbalances. And then you look at, you know, B vitamin imbalances and and iron imbalances, which of course iron and B, B, the B vitamins are vitamins and minerals. Um, But there are many potential hormones that if they're too low or too high can really impact your body's ability to produce energy properly. And I definitely know for me, this was huge. I was exhausted, especially toward the end of my food addiction. And I was still trying to push my body and work out four or five days a week. And I would end up even more exhausted after my workouts because I was burning energy up that I didn't have. Um, So it's almost like you have an empty cup and you're trying to like replenish the thirst of your body with an empty cup. Um, And it's not really possible. And I I definitely have never felt as exhausted as I was in my mid twenties, my mid to late twenties. I was so tired for like five years. It took me five years to balance my hormones. So I totally understand what it's like to throw your body way out of whack and then to have to take the steps one by one, one small step at a time to balance things. Um, But I often find, and I'll talk more about this in my third point, but when we're exercising continuously and perhaps the exercise is too intense for your current state of health, this can really fuel fatigue. If you drink a lot of coffee and you have hormone imbalances and you're tired, it often will fuel the fatigue. If you're struggling with emotional eating and you have a lot of fatigue, often the high, you know, the massive stress of the emotional eating and the diet and that vicious cycle will fuel the fatigue. If you're often in negative self-talk, negative mindset, that will fuel the fatigue. So I really believe across the board, this is not just about 
you know, changing one thing. This is about embarking on a journey to support both your physical and emotional health because they both play a huge role in these symptoms. The next most common symptom that I see people struggling with is cravings. So food cravings. I often see people who have high stress and have higher low cortisol levels thyroid imbalances will often crave more salt. That's because we're like blasting through our mineral levels in our body. And so the body's hoping we'll eat foods rich in minerals, which often is not the case. We'll go for like the chips or the the fast food or things that are really full of um, more refined salts, which, which don't replenish those mineral levels in the body. So I often find again, the higher people's state of stress, the more salt cravings they have because the higher state of stress you're in, your body becomes more acidic and then you're burning through more minerals because your minerals are alkalizing and your body is trying to, you know, re-alkalize your body just to that slight alkaline. Um, but stress and all this negative stuff going on, it makes the body more acidic. So then the body's having to try and compensate by pulling the minerals and then you end up with lower mineral levels and that can contribute to the salt cravings. Sugar is another big one. So I often see people who have blood sugar imbalances who are constantly tired. Maybe you eat a lot of sugar. Maybe you skip meals and snacks through the day. As well, I find again with the cortisol being too high or too low, this can, I find, elevate people's sweet cravings. So whether it's candy, chocolate, ice cream, baked goods, breads, pizzas, pastas, I really see people craving those kinds of foods when they have potential hormone imbalances. And as we regulate the hormones and balance the blood sugar, um, deal with emotional eating, these things do resolve. And I believe me when I say they resolve because I was a sugar addict. Like my, if you've been listening before and if you haven't been, I used to be so addicted to sugar and have such debilitating sugar cravings that I remember times where I was at people's houses or I was at like meetings or this was before I had my business. But when I did like a little bit of self growth work um, through the business I was working for, and I remember being at this event one night and craving sugar so badly and looking at my watch and going, okay, well, the store closes in 25 minutes. I need sugar. And I was trying to fight this urge so much, but it just, it was like debilitating. And so I actually just was like, oh, I have an emergency. I have to leave the event. So I'd like make up, up excuses to leave events and speed to the store. Like, God forbid I ever got a ticket or like something happened because I was like going way too fast to try to get to the store before it closed so I could go and buy my sugar and get my fix. So trust me when I know what it's felt like to have debilitating sugar cravings. And luckily I have no cravings now. And it's wonderful to witness my clients because as they work through, they, they also go from having really bad cravings to no cravings. But it's a sign of balancing the body and the mind. And so we can resolve those cravings. Another common sign of hormone imbalances, and I see this all the time, is troubles with sleep. So whether it's falling asleep, staying asleep, or both, I often find if you're having troubles falling asleep, it may be because you're on technology too late, you're on your phone right before bed, you're wired. Again, that's that stress response. Uh, it can really have an impact on falling asleep. You're thinking about a lot of things, not taking the time to unwind before sleep. So your cortisol, your thyroid, that may be, you know, be just those may not be functioning properly. And then the staying asleep. So I often find if you're waking between the hours of midnight and 4 a.m. and you're waking multiple times or just once, but you can't get back to sleep, that can be a really, really good indication that there's some potential hormone imbalances going on and, and being able to deal with those and your schedule and ensuring that you have time to take care of yourself and have a good self-care routine are very, very important. Inflammation and water retention. So these are very sure signs of potential hormone imbalances. So I often find people, women especially, will retain more water previous to their cycle. Um, but if you find you're just constantly retaining water, your rings are fitting tight on your fingers, your clothes aren't fitting properly, maybe you notice more water retention in certain areas of the body like your lower abdomen, your thighs, your legs, your ankles, your wrists, your face... When there's more inflammation in the body and inflammation shows up in the signs of redness, swelling, pain, and heat, right? So that swelling is kind of that retention piece. That can be a sign that your body's in fight or flight. So when your body is in fight or flight, your body is having a stress response. So your body is going, okay, well, I need to produce lots of cortisol because maybe there's a bear and you have to run away when there's probably not a bear, but it's just that there's all these little stressors that our bodies are responding to all the time. And one of the ways that the body 
you know, produces that response is we hang on to more retention to help quote unquote protect the body, right? So the the thing is though, is we're often, we don't need to be hanging on to that extra retention or your lymphatic system isn't working properly or you're, you're, you just find that it's easier for you to hang on. Maybe you eat a lot of refined salt. So Often I find when people have elevated cortisol or thyroid imbalances, elevated estrogen, they can be retaining a lot more water, feeling warm, feeling puffy, feeling as though you just feel inflamed. So this is another common sign of hormone imbalances. And then maybe you have your cycle and then it all goes away. Ideally, though, we want to get you to the point where retention is minimal to none. I really believe that the more symptoms you have, the more out of balance the body is. So we want to work on you know, supporting these different hormones and supporting the different body systems to calm your symptoms down. Again, I really believe symptoms are our body's way of talking to us. And the more the body is talking to us, the more your body's trying to get your attention and go, hey, there's stuff going on. Are you willing to listen to me and do something different? One of probably the biggest common signs of hormone imbalances, and I see this all the time, I, every single person I've ever had a complimentary consultation with, every client I've ever had, I used to be in this, this space as well, but weight, weight gain, troubles losing weight, plateauing, this is a very big sign of potential hormone imbalances. So I often find, especially if you're having weight gain in the abdominal area, this can be um, a sign of like cortisol imbalances, testosterone, um, if you're having absolute full struggles to lose weight. It just feels impossible. No matter what you do, you can't lose weight. There may be multiple hormone imbalances that could be contributing to that inflammation. If you're finding that you have to go on only very restrictive diets and exercise a ton, and that's the only way you can do it, again, it would be great to investigate your hormones because to me, we don't have to do extreme things to get you know, the protection off. It's just that usually we have to build a, a more kind and gentle relationship with ourselves and with our bodies. So if, and I'll talk about this more in my third point, but if you are so dedicated to your exercise routine and to eating well and nothing is changing, it's not for no reason. There's nothing wrong with you. It's not your fault, but there may be underlying physical symptoms as well as mindset and emotional symptoms that are going on that are standing in the way of your body, you know, feeling safe enough to let go of protection. Another common sign is moodiness, low moods, anger, irritability, sadness, anxiety. Um, some people may say they feel almost depressed. Like I really dislike the word depression though, because it's very heavy and it feels very permanent. So that's why I use the word low, low mood, because I really feel like it's less permanent. I really believe that when we work on the mindset, when we work on the physical and emotional state of health, that we can lighten the mood, that we can improve the mood, we can release anxiety. I used to have awful anxiety when I had high cortisol because my body was in such such an anxiatic state all the time. She was so stressed out. So I'd have like oh, heavy chest and troubles breathing and I'd get lightheaded. So I totally understand what it feels like to have those kind of out of control feelings with your body that don't feel good at all. But just know that hormones can trigger or fuel or heighten some of those feelings. The moodiness especially People may, you may say, I don't feel like myself. Well, that usually is a sign of hormone imbalances. If you find that you especially are irritable again, leading up to your cycle, your sex drive is low. You feel like you, even though you have the body that you do, you just feel like when you look in the mirror, you feel different than when you, when you think about being in your body, if that makes sense. I have a lot of clients who say, well, I feel a certain way, but then when I look in the mirror, I see something else that doesn't resonate with me. And so I think all of this can be tied to your mood, your emotions. And I think it's very important if you are feeling this way, it's important to get your hormones investigated um, because I often find, and sometimes it is necessary, but I, I feel like sometimes prescriptions and certain prescription drugs are just prescribed like candy and given out like candy oh you're having this mood oh take an antidepressant oh you're feeling this way take this and it's like well no unless you really feel that that's what you need it's so important to thoroughly investigate what may be going on for you so that you can get to the roots and resolve it rather than just having something to suppress Another common sign of hormone imbalances, again, may be that you have tons of PMS symptoms, you have low sex drive, you're moody, you get lots of bloating, cramping, pain, your cycle, you miss your cycle, it's spotty or it's really heavy and it's really debil debilitating. And for other people, if you're through that period of your life and you're having a lot of menopausal symptoms, um, again, the, lots of night sweats, you're gaining weight, 
hot flashes, lots of breast tenderness. The more symptoms you have, again, it doesn't matter to me your age. We only have more symptoms because that is a sign that the body is out of balance. If we balance the body, we should have minimal to no symptom and have easy transition from PMS to a cycle or menopause. So I see a lot of people struggling with this. And again, as they balance their body, build a healthy relationship with food, build a healthy relationship with themselves, the symptoms go away. They get better, they improve, or they fully resolve. And so I've worked with hundreds of women and I've seen the proof over and over of what is possible when we we dig deep and we deal with the root causes. And I know that that is possible for you if that's what you're seeking. Another common sign of hormone imbalance is blood sugar imbalances. So especially if you have high or low cortisol, your blood sugar will spike and drop more and in fact, more extremely, when you have this high stress response revving through your body. This will impact your hunger levels. Oftentimes people have higher hunger levels and it takes them longer to feel full. Um, You may notice you have energy crashes in the afternoon or different times through the day. You may have the cravings I talked about earlier. You may just feel tired and like you don't care about your food choices. So it just makes you more susceptible to go to emotional eating. Um, But blood sugar imbalances are, and just feeling like you have to eat super regularly otherwise you get hangry and your your mood crashes and your energy crashes that is surely a sign of blood sugar and that may be tied to cortisol i know for me when my adrenal my cortisol levels were really really off my blood sugar was so sensitive and if i didn't eat like every few hours like i was hangry and exhausted and tired and moody so i know some people can have very sensitive blood sugar but again if we balance the hormones overcome emotional eating and anything else that may be in the way it's fully possible to resolve so these are not things you should have to deal with forever these are things you should be able to gain relief from and ideally resolve And the last symptom or sign of hormone imbalance can be different skin issues. So breaking out, acne, different rashes and things like that, it can indicate different hormone imbalances that are going on in the body. And I often know a lot of women say, well, I have more breakout before my cycle. Um, And again, the hormones are fluctuating in the body. So ideally, though, we want to see it to a minimal. So if you find you have um, skin issues and you've had them for a long time and they don't seem to be going away, it may be a potential sign of hormone imbalances. The No Sugar Coating Podcast is proud to partner with Prairie Naturals Enzyme Force. Enzyme Force is a powerful and complete plant based digestive enzyme blend. This complete enzyme provides a protein digesting blend of protease, bromelain, and papain for the effective digestion of proteins, a wide variety of carbohydrate digesting enzymes to increase energy and reduce gas production, and fibrozyme for the effective breakdown of fiber found in grains, nuts, seeds, fruits, and vegetables releasing trapped minerals. Enzyme Force is allergen-free and contains no yeast, starch, soy, corn, egg, wheat, gluten, dairy, sweeteners, artificial colors, preservatives, chemical solvents, alcohol, or animal products. It's vegan, non-GMO, and tested gluten-free. You can check out more at prairienaturals.ca to locate the nearest store to purchase. And that brings me to my second point, which is hormone imbalance and emotional eating, which is huge. These two definitely can fuel each other. So I find emotional eating for me and and my clientele, emotional eating is often at the core of what fuels a lot of their potential symptoms, especially when it comes to hormone imbalances. There are so, so many stressors that emotional eating can create. So I wanted to dissect some of them so that you get a better understanding as to why you may be experiencing this. And this is exactly what I went through and what I witnessed my clients going through as well. So first off, Stress, you experience stress prior to emotional eating that can throw off the hormones. This could be everyday stress, overbooked schedule, stressful interactions, negative mindsets, poor sleep, poor food choices, not eating enough through the day, too much caffeine. And then you get triggered to emotionally eat because you get a craving or you're stressed or there's you see certain things in a bowl in the office and then you're obsessing about certain foods. And then there's this voice in your head saying, don't do it. You have to stay on your diet. Don't do it. You need to reach that weight goal. Don't do it. You're going to lose control if you do. And then there's this other voice in your head going, no, you're bound to fail anyway. You deserve it. Go and eat it. It's there. It's your favorite. You've had a bad day. Go have some. You you deserve a reward or whatever that 
internal self-talk is for you. And it's that inner conflict in itself that can fuel stress hormones because there is this internal fight going on that can feel so overwhelming and exhausting to try to deal with. So that in itself can throw the hormones out of whack. And part of you just feels torn in both directions because you're fighting so hard to say no, but the ego, the self-sabotaging mindset feels like it can take over so easily for you to go and give in. And normally what is below this kind of being torn in two directions is a feeling of wanting to have control of your body and your weight um, when there's really this immense fear of losing control because you feel as though if you look a certain way, you know, and you're a certain way that you'll finally be happy, you'll be approved of, you'll finally have the perfect life, you can finally live your life to the fullest. And it's the feeling of not being good enough that often is at the core of body image struggles, weight struggles, emotional eating struggles. And then, of course, this fuels the hormone imbalances because of that internal negative self-talk, you know, the diet mentality, and then, you know, you have this internal fight going on, and once you decide to give in, then there's massive emotions of guilt, shame, anger, sadness, frustration. I can't believe I did that again. I promised myself I wasn't going to do that again. You're so stupid. I can't believe you just have no willpower. You need to try harder. You need to be more perfect. And then you may really overdo it and really overeat or binge and completely lose control. And then you're bloated and you're a pain and oh, you just feel tired and kind of nauseous and yucky and you just want to lay on your couch and be bloated. And it's not fun because this large amount of food, it puts a lot of stress on your body, your digestion. It puts a lot of stress on your hormones. So your stomach, your stomach acid, your intestines, your your gut flora, your ability to absorb your nutrients, your intestinal lining. And then of course you don't feel well afterward. And there's a lot of emotions tied to that. And then you may find that you're beating yourself up and being in that negative mindset and negative energy is so draining on us. It's absolutely so draining and it will probably make you feel worse. Binging and emotionally eating can also dehydrate you, make you feel tired, Of course, because this is a big stressor on the body and the inflammation, the fatigue and the stress response occur from this being a regular occurrence for you, from you having this vicious cycle of dieting, exercising, emotionally eating, binging, whatever it is for you. Over longer periods of time between binging and dieting, over exercising, starvation, shaming, being hard on yourself, the symptoms can be fueled and become worse. And I often see women with extremely high cortisol levels, low thyroids, low progesterone, and elevated estrogen. This is a very, very common picture for me to see. I would say that Almost every person I work with has at least one of these, and I'd say one in every three has all of them. Uh, I had all of it. I can so relate. It's so common. These are things that are not necessarily looked at seriously or thoroughly in some means of health and wellness, Um, and I'm here to tell you it's important for you if you've had these symptoms, if you've gotten tests done, and everyone keeps telling you that everything looks fine, but you don't feel fine. I urge you to get a different opinion or work with somebody else that you trust that's really got your best interests in mind when it comes to your health and well-being and helping you dig to why you're feeling the way that you are and helping you and guide you through that process. What I've learned is if you feel off, trust that feeling. It's so important for you to trust that and to seek and find the answers until you get what you need. It is so important. And I did that many times. And I always hear that story when I'm, you know, chatting with people, my potential clients and clients that come to me that, well, yeah, I had these tests done and they said everything was normal. But then when we look at it, it's not. And there's symptoms and there's signs. And so always dig and trust your gut when it comes to your health and well-being. And if something feels off, take action on it. And this brings me to my last point today, which is the impact of fad diets and exercise on hormone imbalances. So many women who come to me, they share that they're eating super clean, they're exercising, yet they can't seem to shed a pound, they can't lose weight, they're plateauing or they're gaining weight. And I know that this can be really frustrating. So I want you to have a lot of love and compassion for yourself if you are struggling with this. That being said, you know, from that space where you're feeling frustrated, what would happen if you could get curious instead? If you ask questions like, why may my body be hanging on to protection? What may this be about? So again, I normally see people who claim that they're eating well and exercising, but it's, and it's not working, but it's normally about so much more than that. Hormones play a huge role in the body's metabolism, the ability to let go of protection. And if you've heard me before, I refer to weight as protection. 
I find if people have high inflammation, if they have the hormone imbalances I've been talking about, digestive imbalances, the unhealthy relationship with food, the negative self-talk, the body's last priority is weight loss when all this other stuff is going on because the body's trying to focus on balancing these other more important priorities. So, you know, if you feel like you're just in this constant fight with your weight and your body, it's to actually understand why you're in this constant fight with your weight and your body. Why does your body not feel safe? Because I really believe weight is protection and we hang on to protection to pat us and protect us if we don't feel safe. So why does your body not feel safe? Do you take time to rest your body and take care of her? Do you do regular self-care or do you have such a busy schedule that when you look at it, it makes you want to cry? If you find you're overwhelmed regularly and you feel that you're always taking care of other people and wanting to fix other people, this may be a great opportunity for you to look at yourself and look at where that's not working and start to shift to focusing on you becoming your own priority and you building a self-care routine and you addressing your unhealthy relationship with your body and food and make some changes there. It is imperative that we take time to rest and relax and unwind in order to see our hormones rest, relax and balance. We can't just quick fix. I don't believe you can just like keep doing things the way that you are and then it's just going to keep working for you. You'll suffer a lot with a lot of symptoms. I also don't believe it's just about taking a boatload of supplements. I also don't believe it's just about, oh, you need to eat cleaner and exercise more. I don't think it's got much to do with any of that. So while many people may preach and say, eat less, exercise more, I don't really find that's ever, ever the resolution. I think it's about looking at your emotional health, your relationship with food, your hormones, your digestive health, your mindset, your thoughts. How are you taking care of yourself? These are the things that I really believe dictate so many processes in the body. And a different approach, a deeper approach, other than continuing on with diets and quick fixes, is often the key. Again, I'll emphasize, this is often the key to take a completely different approach, to focus on your health, to focus on a healthy relationship with food, to focus on overcoming emotional eating, to focus on treating your body kindly, to learn self-acceptance. When we do those things... When we support our hormones and digestion, we do those kinds of things. The body gets to the point where she can breathe, where she or he feels safe enough to balance. And what is the bonus of all of that is when your body is ready, your body will let go of the protection without any force, without extreme measures. And ideally, that is the way that we want to see it happen. Because when we go extreme, it throws the hormones off more. It throws the digestion off more. It throws everything off more. And often extreme measures trigger more emotional eating and more sabotage. So if you're wanting to learn more about your hormones, your digestion, you're struggling with emotional eating, you're feeling just like, I'm, I don't feel like myself. I know there's stuff going on, but I don't know what to do. I don't know what to believe out there because there's tons of just false information. I highly encourage you to reach out and book that 30 minute body freedom call. Investing in yourself and your health to resolve these symptoms supports your overall health and well-being. It supports a healthy relationship with food. It supports body confidence and body freedom. And this helps you to enjoy all areas of your life, your personal life, your business, your career, having fun, having and living your fullest life. And that is what I take a stand for all of you to have is to experience the most happy, full, fulfilling, loving, connected life. So if this is resonating with you, definitely make sure that you reach out. The show notes for today's episode can be found at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast forward slash 178. Remember, as I always say, there's no better time than the present to take action on your health. So take action now. Have a wonderful day and a great week. And I will look forward to sharing a whole new podcast with you next Sunday. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, review, and rate this podcast and share it with your friends. You can find me at amberapproved.ca and follow me on Instagram and YouTube at Amber Romaniak. Join me next Sunday for another brand new episode and another step toward body freedom.